We are following some breaking news in Northwest Jacksonville area. One person is dead and there is a heavy police presence along Kings Road near Canal Street. At that intersection is a Dollar General, although we are not sure at this time where this police presence is focused, but we do know there is a Dollar General in that area. Don't know too many details, but wanted to be out here to really show the community support. Police say that the shooter was on the campus of Edward Waters University. We heard that it was an active shooter on campus and we were stuck in Popeyes, so that kind of scared us a lot, knowing that he was on campus. I was like, okay, I'm inside, so I think I'm good. But at the same time, like this man can really just like do anything. He could have killed. He could have killed us first. Do you believe that if he had not confronted the suspect, do you believe that this attack would have been unfolded here on this campus? I absolutely do. It was actually the students. Um, we preach. Uh, you see something, say something, and they did just that. They seen the individual putting on tactical vests, gloves mass and you know we was patrolling as normal you know we patrol the campus to keep our students safe and they flagged me down and acknowledged that they seen what they seen and at that you know we go right into action you know um, and for you to have on a tactical vest uh, gloves and a mask you know the question raised what are you doing here I never thought it would play out the way that it did. I've talked to multiple community members, many of them just worried that their family members may have been involved in this shooting. A lot of them calling out for answers. We living and we seeing it. We hearing it. Not being able to help. I stand side by side with our law enforcement partners, our mayor, city leaders, to share the heartbreaking news that Jacksonville has suffered the loss of three precious lives at the hands of an active shooter. There are two male victims and one female victim. All of, all of the deceased victims are black. Angela Michelle Carr, 52 years old. Anolt Joseph, or AJ Laguerre Jr., 19 years old. And Gerald Deshaun Gallion, 29 years old. The Office of the Medical Examiner has positively identified the shooter as Ryan Christopher Palmetter. The shooter was 21 years of age when he committed yesterday's atrocities. He lived with his parents in Orange Park in Clay County, Florida. To our knowledge, he had no criminal arrest history. On 7-6 of 2017, he was Baker active in Clay County. On 4-6 of 2023, the FFL transfer to Orange Park Gun and Pawn of a Glock 20, Generation 4, 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter. On 6-22 of 2023, the FFL transferred to Wild West Guns and Gold Palmetto State Army PA-15 556 millimeter AR-15 type rifle. On 8-26 of 2023 at 1248 um, in the afternoon, suspect arrived at EWU behind the library in a gray Honda Element and he dons his bulletproof vest. During this time, a TikTok video of the suspect getting dressed at EWU with no timestamp on that tint on that TikTok video. At 12.55 and 10 seconds, EWU security backs into a parking spot in the same parking lot as suspect. At 12.57 and 49 seconds, the suspect leaves EWU south on Pierce Street, then west on Kings Road. At 12.58 and 17 seconds, EWU security follows our suspect out of the parking lot. Between EWU security leaving the parking lot and shot spotter, 911 call at Dollar General at 13 or at 108. 04, EWU flags down JSO officer and says there's a suspicious person on campus. A white male, heavy set, wearing a gray tank top, black shorts, bulletproof vest, and blue latex gloves, and a tan Kia. That was the description they, that they thought. They thought he was in a Kia. At 108 and 13 seconds, the suspect's on video in the parking lot in front of the store, shooting into a black Kia and murders the first victim, Ms. Angela Carr. The suspect enters the Dollar General store and engages the second victim, a young 19-year-old victim. Anolt Laguerre. At 108 20 and 24 seconds, multiple witnesses exit the rear, of the, uh, the rear door of the store. At 108 and 47 seconds, the suspect exits the same, do same rear door. At 109 and 50 seconds, the first 911 call goes out. At 1010 and 30 seconds, victim Jared Gallion enters the store with his girlfriend. At 113 and 5 seconds, one round shot spotter initiates once again. At 113 and 10 seconds, the suspect shoots a third victim, Gerald Gallion. At 1.13 and 12 seconds, the suspect chases witness Elvisha Chapel through the store 
shooting at her, but does not strike her. At 1.13 and 25 seconds, Elvisha Campbell exits the rear door, uh, the rear east door of the store. And at 1.13 and 37 second, seconds, the suspect shoots out the rear door on the, on the east side of the building. At 1.14 and 23 seconds, the suspect enters the office. At 1.18, the suspect texts his father and says, use a screwdriver to get into my room. The father enters the room and finds a last will and testament of the suspect along with a suicide note on his laptop. At 1.19 and 21 seconds, the officers enter the building and begin to clear, just 11 minutes after this whole ordeal began. Patrol clearing the hallway when officer hears a single gunshot. We believe that's when he killed himself. This shooting was racially motivated and he hated black people. He wanted to kill That's the one and only time I'll use that word. If you take a look at the images on the screen, you'll be able to see what he utilized. This is a dark day in Jacksonville's history. Any loss of life is tragic, but the hate that motivated the shooter's killing spree adds an additional layer of heartbreak. He hated black people, and he came here to Jacksonville to specifically kill some black people. Hate crimes are always and will always remain a top priority for the FBI because they are not only attack on a victim, they are also meant to threaten and intimidate an entire community. Just our own neighborhood. We can't even go to the store. I mean, why would somebody want to do that to us? This is beyond sick. It's beyond sad, you know, my, this is our community. My mother was, was raised right down the street. My grandparents, this was, it's beyond shocking. Our community is sick and tired of being sick and tired. It's unjust that we can't, we can't even walk on the sidewalks. We're not safe in any stores. The people in this community, they're hurting and, and they have every right to. You know, this, this makes no sense. We are still continuing to fight the same oppressive fights, the same bigotry uh, that my mama had to fight that my grandmother had to fight. According to Sheriff Waters, the shooter acted alone. Authorities also don't know how the suspect got the weapons. Mayor Deegan says the availability of these types of guns needs to be under scrutiny. This profile is just the same, the same, the same. Almost every time it seems like a, a young white male with a semi-automatic gun with so often hate in his heart. After he had exhibited mental health issues, how did he get a gun? There was no flag that could have come up to stop him from purchasing those, gu purchasing those guns. So at the end of the day, like we really need to repeal a lot of these bills that <laughs> the governor and my Republican colleagues put forth, uh, but we also need to, to hold each other accountable. We're standing before you now with three people that are dead. Laws on the books that have incited this. And we gotta make sure the call of action is to not let anyone that had anything to do with those laws that we were fighting every day to not understand they did this. The legislature did this. And the legislature needs to undo it. I've heard some people say that some of the rhetoric that we hear doesn't really represent what's in people's hearts. It's just the game. It's just the political game. Those three people who lost their lives, that's not a game. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is here. We're going to have some people come back. And come back. Do you understand why he got those boos when he showed up in the black community? Well, I do, and, and I, I, I dare say he, he may have expected to have that reception. I don't pretend to know what is in the governor's heart. Uh, I simply know that uh, what we're facing here in Jacksonville with, with this hate against the black community, every step that we take uh, in the wrong direction is a step that takes us closer to the next incident. We've got to start facing the reality that we have hate in this state that, that we need to address and that we need to loudly and clearly say is not acceptable. Yet again, hope has been robbed from him, and we 
got to do our part. We're going to be able to do $1 million to Edward Waters College to increase security on campus. As I've said for the last couple of days, we are not going to allow uh, our HBCUs to be targeted uh, by these people. And so we're going to provide security help with them. We also have FDLE on site uh, today evaluating security on campus and making recommendations for any additional infrastructure improvements. Uh, also, uh, per the request that yesterday's vigil, uh, we're able to do $100,000 to the charity that's supporting uh, the victim's family. I feel hurt, damaged inside. I feel empty, I feel lost, because he was my baby. Just wish, I just wish he didn't have to go out like that. He didn't even do anything wrong. All he was doing is just at work. It's just at work, man. She was alone. She died alone. And I don't care what we ever been through. It's my mom. It's my mom is gone. She was his world, and he was her world. And now we're trying to figure out how to tell her, because we haven't told her yet. She's only four. These people have had everyday things going on in their life that they didn't, they couldn't control what happened. It just happened so fast, they didn't even have a chance to even speak and say anything. This is not really what our city is, right? There are problems. There are people that cause problems. There are racist people. There are people that just hate people for whatever reason. Um, but that is not representative of the whole. We can't let hate prevail, and it's on the rise. It's not, not diminishing. I share your grief, and I feel a personal responsibility a personal failure for not having been able to do something to protect you from what happened yesterday. But I want you to know that I am grateful to God for putting me in this position in a time such as this. Because as you know, when I ran for this office, I ran on unifying this community. The division has to stop. They need to know that people are behind them. But we do believe those that sow in tears shall reap in joy.